Hey YouTube, I've been wanting a bandsaw for a good while now, but I haven't been able to justify spending thousands of dollars to buy one for my hobby when I had other tools that I could use to get the job done, albeit less efficiently. I often have a look on some of the local auction sites, and occasionally I put in a bid on something, but I've never done too well with it. The only things I've ever won have had a reserve price because it's far higher than I wanted to pay for it. This time it was a little bit different. I put in a really low bid at 150 on an auction with a day left to run and it went straight to the top. Now there was a last minute bidder that pushed the price up a long way, but it was still far less than I was prepared to pay, so I became the proud owner of a second hand bandsaw. Luckily they had a forklift there who loaded onto the trailer for me, and I managed to get it off with the help of an endless chain and one of my boys. And of course, being second hand, it would be optimistic to the point of foolishness to expect it to come with manuals. However, I was really surprised at how hard it was to find manuals online for this particular machine. I did eventually find them, and I put some links on my website in case they're of interest to you. Yeah, there's a link to my website down below in the description. So let's get on with having a look at this saw. Oh, we got power. It's got to be a good thing. Got the way the auction that I bought this from works is that everything is sold untested. If you've got an option you can go down there and test it out yourself and see if it works. But it's a three hour round trip for me so that's really not an option for me. So what I do is I put in a bid that's fairly low and if I get it I get it and I take my chances. Well this time it hasn't worked out so well. Have the light there but try as I might nothing else is going to happen. So it looks like I've got a little bit of troubleshooting to do and maybe get a bit of repair before I can use this. Okay. Yep. Is that the cheap time? Do you want some? Yes, I'll come up and have some. Okay. The fact that the cover's off means that there's something wrong with the bargain. I've disconnected all the power. No, it's just in there at all. And I'm just going to use the aim meter to test a few things. See if there's anything obvious. That right, fuse is okay. It was one of my major hopes that that might have been a, a bit of an issue. The wiring diagram further would have helped things, but after considerable probing around with the ohm meter, I did manage to work out what most of the circuitry was doing. I found there's a solenoid switch there and there's various cutoff switches that turn this all off and it's finished cutting. Also has a cut off which seems to stop the saw if the blade breaks. So it wasn't all that hard to pick what's happening, just the manual would have made it easier but I couldn't find one online. But anyway, I got that worked out. It seemed to be everything was okay. The one question that was left in my mind was the solenoid switch because that I couldn't test without having power on it. Alright oh, boys and girls, don't you try this at home. Power in for here and measure the voltages. Don't even think about trying to do this yourself unless you're comfortable working around mains voltages. But seriously, if you do get into this and you do it wrong, this voltage can kill you, so play it safe. Now, I used a multimeter to check the voltages across all the contacts. Just to double check that I've interpreted it correctly when I measured it off the ohm meter. I wanted to make absolutely certain that I understood where everything was and where all the voltages were before I got poking around any deeper into it. And in the finish I decided to give the solenoid switch a nudge with an insulated screwdriver and that did the trick. Okay, she works. No. That's what I wanted to say at the moment, but I found the problem, as it's good and bad points. Good point is it works, bad point is I picked a really bad spot to put my Lavalier mic while I tested it. Covered in oil, it seems to be surviving it quite okay at the moment. Okay, well let's fix it. I guess the solenoid switch in there was just a bit sticky, I just need a bit of prompting. I'll go and turn the power off, put it all back together again, and we can try it. 
This all was mounted on a hardwood pallet when I got it, and I decided I didn't want to leave it on that. It's been bolted to it, so I think when it was in the original shop, that's how it was used. It was left on that pallet. I'm pretty sure it wasn't just put on it for the auction. Anyway, I pulled the endless chain out again, wrapped some chains around it so I could lift it up and get the hardwood pallet out from underneath. And I thought at the same time, I'll drag it into position and leave it where I want to use it. I forgot to turn the camera on while I moved that into position, but basically I used the endless chain at ground level, attached it to the bottom of some of the posts and just pulled it around until it was in position where I wanted it. Okay, that's where she's going to live. I'll use it tomorrow and I'll finish the video after I've run some cups with it. Come in, this is real time footage and cutting through 12mm, which is half inch uh, material, half inch by um, 2 inch, this one, or 12mm by 50mm. And that's feeding through there pretty good. If you listen to the sound of the saw, you'll hear this chunk, the chunk every time it goes around once. As I was listening to it, I thought that could either be a couple of missing teeth or perhaps the blade starting to break at the weld joint, which I've seen quite often in band shops. When I finished this cut, I had an examination of the blade, and it turned out that there's a section of teeth missing that was about an inch long, about 25 millimetres long. It's a variable pitch blade, so the teeth are divided up into sections of fine teeth and slightly coarser teeth. Since it's not affecting the quality of the cut, I'm just going to keep going until the blade's worn out and replace it then. The reason it wasn't cutting right through when it was on an angle is that the stock is adjusted wrongly for the angle. It seems to work fine for when it's a straight cut, but on the angle it just needs a tiny bit more. If we zoom in there, that bolt there is the stock. It's easy enough to adjust. Loosen that bottom off a little bit. Tighten the top down about half a turn and then tighten the, the bottom back up. That'll stop him from coming loose. We'll give that one a go because it was so close, half a turn should be plenty. It wasn't quite half a turn, I think it was more like a third of a turn that I gave it. Don't want to do it too much. Now we're cooking with gas. That one was perfect. Went all the way through and cut off at just the right spot. Compared to what I've been cutting this sort of stuff with in the past, this is just super quick. Doing this with a chop saw would have cost me a blade already. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I'm sure you're going to see a lot more of this bandsaw in my future project videos. If anyone's been thinking about getting one of these bandsaws and sitting on the fence a little bit unsure what to do, I would highly recommend it. I think it's been a brilliant purchase and not just because it's cheap, it's just so efficient to do cutting with. Check out my channel for more videos. Until next time.